Howdy folks, hope you've all had a good weekend and welcome back to Mingles with Jingles. This might not be a very long episode because honestly I have absolutely no idea what to talk about today. I mean, there's been very little PC gaming news of late. Um, well, except for you might be interested in the fact that Star Wars Battlefront 2 is going to be uh, free on the Epic Games Store next week. Of course, if you're interested in playing through it for the single-player campaign, free would probably be overcharging, because it is tragically bad. Um, I understand the multiplayer is alright, though, so if that's what you're into, then, yeah, Star Wars Battlefront 2, free of charge next week, or actually this week, on the Epic Games Store. Well, there is other news that I could talk about. For example, um, the Captain Skills rework. It's on the horizon for World of Warships. The thing is, I'm really not qualified to talk about it. Well, I kind of am and I kind of aren't. And that actually raises another issue, which I'll go into in a moment. I mean, has anybody actually been on the public test server and looked at the captain skill changes? Or been following the developers' posts? Because I have. And at times, I'm looking at some of these new skills and wondering just exactly what the hell Wargaming are trying to achieve here. I'll give you an example. There's a new four-point battleship skill. Uh, because the skills are now sorted by... It, it, it's, it's a lot more complicated than the current captain skills, let me tell you that. But there's a four-point battleship skill. It's called Marksman. And what it does is it increases the accuracy of main battery guns if there are no visible enemy ships within the ship's base detectability radius. So, 10% more accurate battleship guns if nobody's inside your detection range. Now, that might sound confusing, so let me explain it to you. First of all, there's a very important word in that there skill description. Visible enemy ships. So you have to be able to actually see them. So if... I don't know, you're in a battleship with a 12 kilometer surface detection range and there's an enemy destroyer 10 kilometers away from you but you can't see him because his detection range is only 6 kilometers then the skill kicks in. It, it, it takes effect because you cannot see that enemy ship. Even though he's inside your detectability range, he's not visible. Now that begs the question, what happens if the destroyer should be visible but has popped smoke. Does the skill take effect? Well, it should, because it's not visible. But what happens if somebody pops hydro or radar? Does the destroyer now count as visible? And will the skill then stop working? And if, you know, as is usually the case, nobody bothers shooting at the destroyer who's been radared, the radar expires and he remains alive inside his smoke screen, will the skill start working again? You see? This is just one single four-point battleship skill, and it's already so complicated it's starting to make my head hurt. But even so, that's only really part of the point here. Regardless of how complicated or uncomplicated it is, what this skill is doing is it's rewarding battleships for cruising around the map borders as far as possible away from trouble and spending the entire game shooting at targets at maximum gun range in order to get that increased 10% accuracy. So it's rewarding and incentivizing battleship players for playing badly. Right. Okay. Now there is a counter-argument here, and that counter-argument is that bad players are going to be bad regardless of the state of the captain skill system. So if they're going to be bad anyway, you may as well make them good at being bad <laughs> by making them 10% more accurate. And, well, yeah... In fact, no. Now, I'm sorry. I don't honestly believe it's ever a good idea to actively encourage people to play badly. Perhaps it might be better to rework certain skills to encourage and incentivize people to play well. But apparently I seem to be in the minority where this school of thought is concerned because here we are looking at new skills which encourage, incentivize and reward battleship players for being bad. Was there a meeting that I missed? C can I can I still vote against this? No? I missed my chance. Okay. Fair enough. 
Bear in mind though, this is only one skill from the battleship section of new captain skills. There's a dizzying number of new skills because there's not just one set of captain skills for every type of ship. Now you've got aircraft carrier, battleship, cruiser, and destroyer skills. And I'm looking at one of the cruiser skills, it's called gunner. It's a one point skill. And they had the opportunity here to fix something that, in my opinion at least, you may disagree, that was broken with the old skill, which just gave a flat percentage increase to the traverse speed of your main battery gun turrets. And the new skill gives a flat percentage increase to the traverse speed of your main battery gun turrets. Now, why is that a bad thing? Or if not a bad thing, why is it not a good thing? Well, the ships that need that skill the most, the ships that do have slow main battery turret traverses, benefit less from a percentage increase than ships that already have fast traversing turrets and don't actually need the skill. I mean, you don't have to be great at maths to figure out that 20% more of very little is still very little. <laughs> Instead, and I'm just picking a number out of my arse here, but for example, if you have a ship with a slow turret traverse of only 3 degrees per second, or a ship with a fast turret traverse of 15 degrees per second, if you make the skill, oh, I don't know, increases your turret traverse by 3 degrees per second, you have doubled the turret traverse of the ship that needs it, and the ship that didn't really need it in the first place, well, wouldn't pick it because they didn't really need it in the first place. Now, I'm no games developer, so maybe I'm just looking at this in far too simple a fashion, but if you can think of a hole in my logic, by all means, let me know in the comments, because it just seems that that would be of more use to the kind of ship that would actually need that skill in the first place, rather than giving them a percentage increase of very little, which is still very little, and doesn't actually benefit them in the way that that skill is supposed to. It's not just me, is it? Or is it? I don't know. Maybe it is. I realise I'm in danger of getting lost in the details here, but please bear with me. Even those of you who don't play World of Warships, because the broad overall point that I'm trying to make here, which I promise I will get to as soon as possible, uh, did need some illustration by way of going into the details of some of these new skills. And there are a lot of new skills. There are four times as many as there used to be. And that's kind of the point that I'm making here. Because one of the things that I really liked about World of Warships was the simplicity of the game. Um, there was a bit more to it than World of Tanks. I mean, in World of Tanks, you, you didn't... It was nice to know how much penetration the ammunition that you were firing from your gun had, but you didn't really have to memorise it. Because your aiming reticle would change colour depending on the likelihood of being able to penetrate whatever armour it was currently pointed at. Uh, World of Warships doesn't have that, so it was a little more complicated and that you had to remember armour thresholds. You had to know the calibre of the guns that you were firing and remember the armour thresholds of the targets that you were looking at. And when I say armour thresholds, I'm primarily talking about battleships here, uh, but it applied to cruisers as well. There was a small amount to remember. And the armour thresholds were like 25mm, 27mm and 32mm. And as long as you knew what armour threshold your guns could overmatch with their armour-piercing shells, uh, you were good. And if you could remember that much, it would give you a significant advantage over anybody who didn't, providing you were capable of actually exploiting that information to your own advantage. And even if you couldn't remember those armour thresholds and gun calibres, it, it didn't matter that much as long as you took the hint and stopped trying to fire armor piercing shells at something that you couldn't overmatch and switch to high explosive. And God knows there are plenty of players out there who completely fail to take the hint and continue trying to fire armor piercing at targets that they can't overmatch and never switch to high explosive. And I kind of like that about World of Warships because it was simple, but there was enough complexity there that just by memorizing a few numbers you could drastically improve your effectiveness. But that overall simplicity and relative complexity hasn't really been true of World of Warships for quite some time now. 
going back, I think, to the the armor rework and the cruiser rebalancing and the IFHE skill changes and now these captain changes, there's suddenly a lot more that I feel that you really do need to be aware of in order to maintain the same level of competence as you used to be able to by just knowing about the 25, 27 and 32 millimeter armor thresholds. It's gotten to the point lately in World of Warships where there is just so much new information that I feel like I should know in order to be able to talk about the game with any degree of authority. And I don't feel like I have that knowledge anymore. I'm sure there are going to be people who argue that I've never been able to talk about World of Warships <laughs> with any degree of authority. Ha ha. Yeah, very funny. But you know what I mean? I mean, it never used to be this complicated. And yet, that's not something that you can say is true today. And it's getting more complicated. But then you've got to ask yourself the question, and because it does need to be asked. Why is it getting this complicated? Who does that benefit? What's it getting this complicated for? Because World of Warships is a much more popular, it's not quite a mainstream game, I mean, it's a fairly niche topic that it covers. It's never really going to be mainstream, but for a niche game, it is incredibly popular. The thing is, the overwhelming majority of the World of Warships player base, and this has probably been true since about a year after the game came out of closed beta, but the overwhelming majority are distinctly casual players. All right, they don't read the patch notes. They definitely don't read the developer's blog. And they're probably not going to be going over the captain's skill tree with a fine tooth comb in an effort to understand all of the technicalities. Uh, these are players who just, and there's nothing wrong with this, they just want to sail around in their boats and shoot things. They almost certainly don't have the faintest idea of the calibre of guns of the ships that they're sailing around in. They wouldn't know the difference between a light cruiser and a heavy cruiser. In fact, a lot of them would be hard-pressed to tell the difference between a light cruiser and a destroyer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Although, having said that, there are probably a significant minority of people playing World of Warships who absolutely could tell you the difference between a light cruiser and a heavy cruiser, and in fact could probably give you the service history of each and every ship that they currently have access to. History nerds. There are probably a lot of people playing World of Warships for no better reason than because they're naval history nerds. And they know absolutely everything that there is to know about the actual ships represented in game without knowing everything that there is to know about the game mechanics that govern the way those ships play in game, if that makes any sense. The thing is, I strongly suspect, despite the fact that most of these casual players are never going to read the patch notes, or the developer's blog, or go over any new captain skill trees with any great degree of, what's the right word, well, understanding. <laughs> I suspect that a lot of these changes are specifically for them, and not for the minority of players who are actually going to read them and try to make sense of them, because we're looking at skills that reward, encourage, and incentivize, whether you realize that that's happening or not, because you haven't bothered reading the patch notes, players who are bad at the game. But jingles, you crusty old sea dog, I hear you cry. That doesn't make any sense. Surely you're talking out of your arse here. Surely a game developer who cares about the long-term health of their game would actively work to introduce systems that encourage people to play better and reward them when they do instead of introducing systems that reward people for playing badly, like battleship drivers who cruise around the map border blasting away at targets 18 or more kilometres away. Well, you'd think that, because if you sat here listening to me, it's likely that you have an interest in getting better at, in this particular example, World of Warships, but it applies to gaming in general. The thing is, you are not the majority of the player base. And this, again, I'm using World of Warships as an example because of the various different changes that are incoming in the Captain skill tree, but this doesn't just apply to World of Warships. This applies to any, and I use the word advisedly, mainstream game. And by that I mean a game where the overwhelming majority of the audience 
or casual players who have no real investment or interest in the underpinning game mechanics of whatever game it is that they're playing. These are people who, again, using the same example, are going to cruise around in their battleships engaging targets 20 kilometers away. Because that's what battleships did, regardless of what the game developer puts in the patch notes or the developer blog. And that's why we see skills coming up in the new Captain Skill rework rewarding players who cruise around on the map border blasting away at targets 20 kilometers away because that's the majority of the player base. Those of us who do read the patch notes, those of us who do try to stay up to date on the development blog or if we don't have the time to do that who at least watch videos compiled by people who do try to stay up to date and summarize the details for you are left with an increasing sense of information overload but the driving force behind the majority of these kind of changes the overwhelming majority of the player base who honestly just don't give a shit <laughs> who are the ones who are benefiting most from it because they don't give a shit and when you look at it from that perspective it it does kind of make sense from wargaming's point of view because unfortunately what it boils down to is something that I mentioned earlier and dismissed as an argument because, naive fool that I am, <laughs> I don't believe that a game should encourage people and reward people for being bad. Well, it's not true that the game is encouraging people to be bad. If that was the case, you'd have to assume that the bads were actually reading the patch notes, but of course they're not. That's one of the reasons why they're bad. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the sad fact of the matter is that the overwhelming majority of any kind of mainstream game, however popular it may be, World of Warships not a particularly popular one, but considering the niche topic that it covers, surprisingly so, uh, the overwhelming majority of the player base, who are not going to read the patch notes, they're not going to read the dev blog, they're certainly not going to change the way they play, because they're having perfect fun right the way they are, thank you very much. And they're the ones who are going to be benefiting from the changes. And when that's the majority of your player base, these are the people that Wargaming needs to keep happy, whether they realise the changes that are being introduced to the game for their benefit or not. If you think about it that way, it makes perfect sense. I mean, I know that we all like to think that we're the core part of the player base for World of Warships because we take an interest in how the game works and how it could be better. But we're really not. I'm going to start pulling numbers out of my arse here, okay? Uh, purely for purposes of illustration. I absolutely definitely don't have hard facts and figures, but, well, let me just run this one at the flagpole and see who salutes. I think we can all agree, even though we probably don't know for sure, although who knows, maybe these figures are actually available, but players like you and me, and this doesn't just apply to World of Warships, this applies to any kind of game, that has ongoing microtransactions. Players like you and me, who actually care about how the game works, who try to understand it, almost certainly spend more money on the game than players who don't. So surely, we should be the demographic that the game developers are actually catering to when it comes to introducing changes into the way the game works. Well, no. Because while we almost certainly do spend more money per capita on the game, we are a very small percentage of the player base. And again, I'm pulling numbers out of my arse here, but let's say we represent 5% of the player base. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less, but we'll go with 5%. And of that 5%, maybe 60% of us regularly spend money on the game. That's a big percentage, but it's a big percentage of a small number. Of the other 95%, if only 10% of them spend money on the game, that 95% are between them spending a lot more money than we are. And therefore, that 95% who are not invested in the game, who don't understand how it works and don't really care about changes to the game, are definitely, from a purely financial perspective, the people that the game developers should be catering to. So even though it should horrify us that the game is being developed to appeal to people who just don't give a shit, <laughs> It really shouldn't surprise us, because the game developers, understandably, 
want to make a living out of their hard work. The unfortunate long-term consequence of all of this, of course, is that as the game developers continue to cater almost exclusively towards people who are bad at the game, the chances of the bads if not becoming goods, then at least becoming not bads, <laughs> gets smaller and smaller and smaller because there's just no incentive for them to do anything but because that's the way the game is set up. Like I said, it's perfectly fine to be horrified at this, but we really shouldn't be surprised. And again, you know, I beg your indulgence here. I've been using World of Warships as an example, but it's true of any game as it becomes more and more popular, and as it attracts a more and more casual player base. At the same time, there is something of a paradox here, because the game is becoming more complicated, while at the same time catering to people who don't care about those complications. And that in itself can be counterproductive, because you're bringing all of these new players in, and what's the first thing they see when they get into the game? Right? Just picture, those of you who can remember that far back, who were playing that far back, what the port screen looked like in World of Warships five years ago. How few things there were for you to know about in order to get your ship up and running. And World of Warships, it has to be said, does do a better job of this than most by gradually introducing new features to you. But there's still a bewildering array of stuff on screen in the port, much more so than there was five years ago. There's a multitude of buttons and drop downs and menus and all sorts of things that you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself for the first time upon seeing it, holy shit, <laughs> what do I press? Now admittedly a lot of those new buttons and menus and drop downs are to do with selling your things <laughs> and you don't actually need uh, to use in order to actually get into your first battle. But if you're brand new to the game and this is your first time in the port, you're not going to know that. You're a brand new player sitting there staring at the port screen for the first time ever and you've just been presented with this massively bewildering number of buttons and options and menus and drop downs. World of Tanks in particular is terrible where this sort of thing is concerned. I know that a lot of you listening to this video are probably going to be World of Tanks veterans. I know that a lot of you probably haven't played World of Tanks in a very, very long time as well. Here's my challenge to you. Reinstall World of Tanks. Well, in fact, no, you don't even have to go to the trouble of reinstalling World of Tanks. Just go to YouTube and find a World of Tanks video recorded in the last couple of months where somebody is spending at least part of it in the garage screen. Remember what World of Tanks' garage screen used to look like seven or eight years ago? In fact, you don't even have to imagine it. Just look at some of my earlier World of Tanks videos from more than five years ago. Uh, some of my really, really old tank reviews. There was very little to see and very little to click on in the garage screen. Even if you wanted to get lost in all the nuts and bolts and the details, there was not that many details available for you to look at. It was not hard at all for you to very quickly identify how to get to the information that you needed and very easy to understand the information. Take a look at the World of Tanks garage screen today. <laughs> Go onto YouTube, find a video of somebody spending a couple of minutes um, looking at tanks in their garage and just try to make sense of it. <laughs> and remember, most of you are going to be doing this as World of Tanks veterans, even if you haven't played the game in a couple of years. People who used to know how to get around the garage screen in World of Tanks. And now try to imagine that you've never played World of Tanks before. <laughs> right? You're a completely new player to the game. You've just installed it. The game boots up. You get into the garage. And that mess of buttons, drop downs, icons demanding your attention is the first thing that you see and you're expected to make sense of any of it. How long do you think that game would stay installed on your hard drive or, you know, solid state drive because we're in the 21st century now? I can tell you what it was like for me 
because I spent, oh, I took a good, at least a year long break from World of Tanks at one point, because the game was just pissing me off too much. I really wasn't enjoying playing it anymore. Um, and I can't remember what it was that prompted me to go back in. Perhaps it was one of the Christmas reward tanks. I had to actually go in and claim it. I can't remember, whatever it was. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I got into that garage screen and I didn't know where anything was. I didn't know how to do anything. It was, it was intimidating. I'll tell you what I did notice though. Something that leaped out at me very, very quickly as I was just, you know, clicking on buttons and drop downs and menus within menus, trying to make sense of it all and figure out where everything was, was that there were an awful lot of new and interesting ways for me to spend money on the game beyond just buy gold and or premium time. And it was not difficult to find all of those. I'm not saying World of Warships is as bad as World of Tanks in that respect, because it absolutely isn't. But it is heading in that direction. Here we are, 25 minutes into a video where I said I really can't think of anything to talk about. <laughs> so this is probably going to be a short episode of Mingles with Jingles. I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, well, once I get my teeth into a subject, it's difficult for me to let go, but this is it. I'm, I'm done. I, I'm finished. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it's given you something to think about, or at the very least, something to talk about. You know what the comments section is for. Let's see what you think there. Am I talking out of my arse again? Or perhaps I do actually have something. Well, let me know what you think. In the meantime, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. And as always, stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you next time.